Let's go to the border now. NBC's Morgan Chesky is in Eagle Pass, Texas. Also joining us, Lee Gallant. He is the deputy director of the ACLU Immigrants' Rights Project. We should note the ACLU has filed a lawsuit to try to stop this law. And also with us, MSNBC political analyst and founder of Futuro Media, Maria Hinojosa. So, Morgan, you are near one of the largest U.S.-Mexico border crossings. What's the impact of these roller coaster court rulings there on the ground? Yeah, Anna, I think a lot of unanswered questions right now. On the way to Eagle Pass yesterday, I had a chance to speak with Sheriff uh, of neighboring Valverde County. That encompasses Del Rio, just up the road from us here in Eagle Pass. And I asked explicitly about SB4. Uh, and the sheriff told me that right now, they don't really have any clear-cut guidance from state lawmakers, from state law enforcement leaders, on how exactly they would put that law into practice uh, when it finally goes into full effect uh, after what can be best described as really legal whiplash here. C consider the fact that by empowering state lawmaker or state law enforcement, rather, police, sheriff's deputies, uh, state troopers with the ability to arrest migrants suspected of illegally crossing, uh, that's kind of adding to their plate that in a lot of instances is already incredibly full. Many of these departments have already dealt with staffing issues well ahead of this. Uh, now being given this new responsibility to essentially enforce what they've always considered federal law uh, is stressful to some degree, and in a lot of cases, they don't have the manpower to do it. I ask him specifically, do you have your deputies uh, planning to enforce SB4? And he says until they receive explicit instructions on how to do so, uh, that he's told, telling them not to. Anna? Maria, the White House has said this law quote, will not only make communities in Texas less safe, it will also burden law enforcement and so chaos and confusion at our southern border. Justice Sonia Sotomayor seemed to echo at least the sentiment about sowing chaos in her dissension to when the Supreme Court kind of kicked this back to the lower courts here. Can you help us understand how this law would potentially make things worse at the border, not better? Well, as the reporter just said, the sheriffs are saying, when we get information about what we're supposed to do, then we'll act, assuming this goes forward. There's no information, Anna, to be given to anyone because you and I could be undocumented. Anybody in the studio could be undocumented. Because it's if you are suspected if of If you're crossing suspected. The so you, but how do you understand somebody who's undocumented? That's the whole problem is the narrative behind this is that somehow in our country we're able to say, well, that person is undocumented, but that person isn't. It's absolute racial profiling, which is why these laws have failed in the past. You know, let's think about 2010, SB 1070. This is Arizona. Right. This notion of like we're going to deprive everybody from every possible uh, benefit in the country and we're going to ask you to show us your papers. What's happened in Arizona right this very minute? You know what's happening, Anna? Young people are deciding to become activists in the state of Texas and they're saying we're not going to let this fly in our state. The young people who did the same thing in 2010 in SB for SB 1070 in Arizona have changed that political state, have changed the state. Who won Arizona in 2020? It was Joe Biden. So you have to understand that the, the backlash from all of this, a whiplash, of course, yes, but then there's gonna be a backlash. Negative, of course, because you're gonna have police racially profiling everybody in the state of Texas. But on the other hand, there's gonna be a new generation of activists that are born right now in these days who will then, because I, I know, because I'm a professor, I see them, they'll go to law school, they're going to become the next Sonia Sotomayors. So this is a horrible moment for the state of Texas and for our country, but it won't last. Now you're talking about the potential political impacts and how this could really maybe uh, force action on issues related to immigration policy. But, but Morgan, there's still this issue of just logistics around what's happening at the border and this particular law, this idea from Texas officials that this would, you know, allow them to take action to defend their state. But we know already when that SB4 was allowed to go into effect by the Supreme Court for about nine hours yesterday, there was the confusion that you've already talked about. Uh, do we know if 
there were any arrests during that time and sort of what the process looks like? Because I wonder, do we know where migrants who are arrested by local police or state officials would be held and would they just bypass the immigration courts altogether? What does that look like? Yeah, on all great questions. We do know right now that there's been no official reporting of any local law enforcement taking SB4 into full effect within that nine hour window or so when the Supreme Court uh, enacted it, uh, allowed it to be uh, enacted. We do know that uh, conversations we've had with local law enforcement, I, I've asked the question, you know, do you have capacity in your stations, in your jails uh, to house migrants that would be theoretically arrested under SB4? Uh, that depends on the agency you speak to. Uh, some have larger facilities than others. Uh, we do know that here on the border, there have been certain instances where temporary facilities have been set up uh, so they could uh, essentially, uh, you know, house migrants on a temporary basis, working in conjunction uh, with federal authorities. But as it stands with us before, I, I think that goes to show that there's a much bigger logistical question here. Uh, we do know that judges would be empowered to deport these migrants theoretically back to their countries of origin. So you ask that question about whether or not this would impact the federal immigration process, uh, you have to imagine that it would. However, important to know yesterday, Anna, that the country of Mexico came out and said that they would not be accepting uh, any migrants that were deported from the state of Texas, uh, in addition to those that they're already receiving uh, from the U.S. federal government. So uh, currently, more questions than answers right now as it relates to SB4. And we do have this hearing, of course, kicking off here uh, in just a short time this morning. I know you'll be paying attention to that. Please report back if there are any updates throughout this hour. Thanks for the reporting, Morgan. Lee, let's let's try to take this piece by piece because there are so many aspects and potential challenges that this law poses, right? The Texas Attorney General is defending this law, arguing, quote, Texas has the sovereign right to defend itself from violent transnational cartels that flood the state with fentanyl weapons and all manner of brutality. What's your response to that argument? Yeah, this law is patently illegal for, and there's precedent going back 150 years. And to be, to be clear, I mean, Texas is basically saying we want the Supreme Court, like they did in Roe v. Wade, to overrule all this precedent. Under current law, going back, again, more than a century, this law is unconstitutional. As your reporting has shown, this is a federal issue, immigration. And the reason it is, is for one, because of foreign relations. Mexico doesn't want to take people back. That's where Texas wants to deport them to. That's a sensitive relationship with Mexico. That's why it has to be the national government. But also, the law is conflicting with so many things that Congress has enacted. For example, Congress said someone may be prosecuted for illegally entering, but then they can't be immediately kicked out. They have to be able to apply for relief, such as asylum and protection. That's enshrined in our law. Texas says, no, we're just going to kick you out, and if you re-enter, you're going to go to jail for 20 years. Over and over, Texas's law conflicts with what Congress has set up. Now, con Texas may be upset with the way the current administration is enforcing the, the law, but the, the way to go about that is to lobby the federal government. States have periodically been upset with the way the federal government enforces mm -hmm. the law, but mm -hmm. it's still a national prerogative. And that's on top of, when Marie said, all the racial profiling, the chaos that's going to ensue. Right. Uh, we, we think this law is patently unlawful. Lee, you, you discussed one of the main reasons that this is the federal government's job to deal with immigration policy and enforcement. And you and Morgan pointed to how Mexico is already responding, one top official there, saying that they wouldn't accept migrants who are deported by the state of Texas. So I'm just wondering how you see this shaking out if individual states start acting independent of the federal government on immigration, how is this going to work in terms of the relationships with other countries where these migrants are coming from? 
yeah, it's it's going to be, as you said, a complete chaos, and it's going to put these migrants between a rock and a hard place. Because on the one hand, Texas is saying, if you don't leave, you're going to go to jail for 20 years. On the other hand, Mexico won't take them back. And so now we're in a situation where we don't know how the law is going to be enforced. And that's one of the reasons we'll be in court in just a few minutes saying you have to pause the law until it can be fully briefed and argued, which will happen relatively soon. And at that point, we hope the court will strike it down. But imagine if every state decided to have its own immigration policy or anything that is normally for the federal government. There would be complete chaos, and it would ruin our relationships with other countries. We can't have each state negotiating with Texas. It has to be the national government. The Supreme Court has said that over and over. And so I think we're looking at a really difficult situation. Ultimately, I think this is a political game by Texas, and hopefully the courts see it for that. So we're talking about SB4 in Texas, but Maria, we're starting to see other states follow suit. Iowa just passed uh, some additional legislation there that would make it a crime to enter that state after being deported or denied entry into the United States. So sort of following in Texas's footsteps here. Again, states now trying to have their own immigration policy, the impact. It sounds a little bit like chaos, doesn't it? And I think that's part of the whole conversation. And is this just the tip of the iceberg? The problem is, Anna, why, why did Texas feel like they needed to do this? What is the narrative? And the narrative is, oh my God, Texas is being overrun by uncontrollable people who are criminals. And we have a huge problem with immigrants and refugees as criminals in the state of Texas. The facts suggest otherwise. And what I'm saying is, all of the data says those are lies. When you base policy based on lies, and we have to say that they're lies, Anna. For example, I had my assistant pull up just some basic, basic data, right? So a 2020 study by Rice University found that the economic benefits of illegal immigration in Texas vastly outweigh the costs of immigrants in the state. That has also been shown by the GAO of the state of Texas. Immigrants legally or whether they came in without documents, are a net economic benefit. In 2018, the state of Texas collected $2.4 billion in state taxes from undocumented people. $2.4 billion in state taxes. And in 2020, the Department of Justice found that um, in the state of Texas, undocumented immigrants significantly lower rates of crime. So all of this law, all of this, how's it going to happen? What are we going to do? It's based on lies that are being said about immigrants and refugees. And so we as journalists have to say, no, this law should not go into effect. It's impossible for it to go into effect. It's absolute chaos. It's illegal. It's against human rights. It's engendering a racial profiling. But we have to be the ones that say it's based on fluff. And, and we have to highlight the yeah. truth and the facts about the matter. Thank you so much for helping us do that.